Hey guys, it's Chris. From lemurs climbing on spikes to blobs dealing with enormous amounts of pressure, here are eight of the most extreme environments that animals actually live in. Number 8. Madagascar Spiny Forests Madagascar is a country known for its many types of endangered animals and special ecosystems, but by and large one of the most dangerous on the island is the Madagascar Spiny Forest, also known as the Spiny Thickets. But it's not just the rather thorny area that makes this place extreme. It's a part of the island where droughts aren't just regular, they're expected. And they're expected to last a long time. Some years, it doesn't even get 500 millimeters of rain, forcing plants and animals to adapt to the harsh climates. 95% of the plants can only be found here because they've adapted specifically to this climate. It's home to six species of primates, including the ring-tailed lemur and the gray-brown mouse lemur. If you want to see the native lemurs in action, be sure to check out Planet Earth 2 for some truly amazing footage. There's a mother lemur and her baby climbing up some spiky plants, which is pretty impressive. Other animals have also adapted to live here, such as various species of turtle and tortoise, the spider tortoise, who are able to go long distances without water. So while life may be hard for these spiny forests, it's livable if you're able to make it through the heat and the lack of water. Number 7. California's Iron Mountain During the 1800s, many places in California were mined for gold and other metals. For California, the place known as Iron Mountain was a very rich deposit for metals. But when all the work was done, the holes created by the mine became a lake that was basically made of acid inside the mountain. And by acid, I do mean that literally, as it has almost the same properties as battery acid. So you would think that a lake of acid is something that nothing could survive in. But surprisingly, many microbial species thrive in this specific mountain area, mainly because they're protected by a pink film, and they help the lake grow by eating the iron, pyrate, and other materials within Iron Mountain, and transforming them into compounds that make the lake more acidic. As you can see, they don't mind the acid. They're actually helping it get bigger and stronger via the addition of sulfuric acid that they help make. Number 6. The Galapagos Islands In terms of the theory of evolution and how we look at life, the Galapagos Islands serve a really great purpose. It was here that Charles Darwin proved his theories about evolution, showed the power of natural selection and more to the world. But what gets lost in the midst of the evolution talk is the fact that the Galapagos Islands are a rather inhospitable place to live. In fact, the islands themselves were born from still active volcanoes, ones that sterilized the area so life couldn't survive. It was only by sheer luck and the passage of time that things honestly started to grow there, via seeds and things being carried by the winds or drifting ashore. Animals, eggs, and all kinds of things washed up on the island over the time, including the only penguin species to live near the equator. And the reason that these creatures evolved, much to the delight of Darwin, was because they had to in order to survive the rather sparse ecosystem that are on the islands. Number 5. Deep Sea Vents The further you go down into the ocean, the closer you get to the Earth's core which is hot liquid magma that has temperatures well over 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure that the core exerts is so strong, it forms cracks that make vents, and these vents go straight into the ocean via small openings. Not unlike hot springs, the waters that these vents exert is so hot that it would melt just about anything it touches, except for many simple microbes and single-celled organisms that somehow, some way, thrive in the intense heat from these vents. They absorb not just the heat, but also the nutrients that these vents dig up from within the Earth itself. Another incredible mystery of these vents is that there are plants that use the low light and heat from these vents and go through the process of photosynthesis, which was thought to be impossible. Number 4. Yellowstone Hot Springs Yellowstone National Park is considered one of the great tourist destinations in the United States of America. 
What makes the park so great is its numerous areas of interest, including mountains, plains, and of course those hot springs. The hot springs are made because Yellowstone is a volcano, one that erupted a long time ago, and the pressure from its eruptions allowed for geysers and hot springs. But don't think about going into those waters. If you touch them, you're going to boil your skin, and diving into them is an instant death sentence. Not to mention, your body would dissolve in the waters in a short amount of time. But don't think that just because these waters are boiling hot that no life can survive in there. In fact, there's a plethora of microbes that live within these waters solely because they love the heat. One of the most prominent of these microbes are the Thermus aquaticus. And not only do the microbes love the heat, they give back to the waters by helping it change color, thus giving it a unique look that attracts all kinds of tourists. Number 3. The Outback In the continent of Australia, if you stick to the outer parts of the nation, you're going to find all sorts of wonderful man-made things standing alongside the natural beauty of the area, such as the Sydney Opera House, loads of beautiful beaches that you can swim and surf in, as well as all sorts of restaurants and other great amenities. But if you were to ask for places you should avoid in Australia, most people would point to the Outback. The outback is, quite literally, the middle area of the continent of Australia, to the point where it's so big and expansive you can truly see the line in which the cities and other populated areas of Australia stop, and where the outback begins. The outback is 9,400 square miles in size, and it features a plethora of climate zones and biomes, but it's punctuated by a series of incredible dry deserts and other harsh environments. Animals must work very hard to survive in these areas. There are all kinds of kangaroos, dingoes, snakes, spiders. The outback is considered one of the last natural areas of the world because of the lack of human interference. And given the area's size and lack of certain necessities, that's it's not going to change for a bit. Number 2. Antarctica This is not a place that has one harsh area or ecosystem to live in. It's all one harsh place to live in. It's the only continent on Earth that does not have a definitive human presence, outside of a few scientific colonies. This is due to the massively cold temperatures and weather that's not very hospitable. The average temperature of the continent is well below zero, sometimes even averaging out to negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And at its coldest, it's reached negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Most life couldn't even dream of living in a place like this, because their warm or cold bodies wouldn't be able to handle the cold. Not to mention because 98% of Antarctica is covered in ice, that means there's not a lot of things to eat or get nourishment from. While the snow itself is technically water, it's not exactly pure. Plus, while technically plants do grow in Antarctica, it's a very limited growth cycle, and its biodiversity isn't even close to the other six continents. That being said, like we learned from Jurassic Park, life finds a way. Penguins, seals, all kinds of fish, and tons of invertebrate animals have all found a way to live in Antarctica in the waters there, and even thrive in a way. Antarctica is one of the most known places in the world because of their penguin population, which has spawned many movies. And scientists continue to study the continent because of the mysteries that it still holds, mainly in regard to what it was like before it was a frozen tundra. Number 1. Mariana Trench The ocean is full of life, from the smallest of fish to the biggest of whales. And just about every fish or mammal or other creature that lives in the oceans has a range that they can go, meaning they can go to the very surface of the ocean or sea they're in, or they can go down deep into the depths. But how far down they can go is based on their physiology, and very few can make it from the top of the ocean to the depths of the Mariana Trench. The Mariana Trench is the deepest point on Earth. When it was found via sonar, it was discovered to be over 36,000 feet down. To give you a picture, if you took Mount Everest at ground level, picked it up, turned it upside down and put it in the ocean, the tip of Everest wouldn't even touch the bottom of the trench. To this day, only four humans have ever made it into the trench. It's so deep that the water pressure is massively intense, and without proper protection, you'd be squashed in an instant. Equipment and subs must be prepared. Not to mention, there's no light down in this part of the ocean. 
so you'd have to go by the light you have and other instruments. Hearing all of this, you no doubt think, how could anything live down there? That's a good question, and the answers aren't really out there yet. But what we do know is that there's an entire ecosystem down there that thrives in the deep pressures and lightless waters of the Mariana Trench. There are things like the goblin shark and the anglerfish, as well as many other small creatures and loads of plant life. We honestly don't know all that lives down there, or how it lives down there, but scientists are working to find out. In fact, most attempts to capture a creature from the Mariana Trench and then bring them to the surface, well, it results in the creature being distorted due to their body not being able to handle the new pressures of the lighter waters. Just look at the poor blobfish. You could even say that while the ocean is a world within a world, the Mariana Trench is undiscovered country, and it's going to remain that way for a good long time. Hey, thanks for watching. Which of these environments do you think would be the harshest to live in? And which of the animals that we discussed do you think are the toughest for surviving in such a place? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on World List.